We're live, and uh, thank you so much for uh, for tuning in live. It's Monday, June fifth, um, and this is Drawing for Tattooers. I'm your host, James Wisdom. Uh, with us this morning, we have Amber. Good morning, Amber. We're live. Yeah. Oh, you're on mute right now, but I'm just gonna go through all of the you know the announcements and stuff. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes. So, um, again, uh, good morning, Harriet. So nice to see you. Um, I'm James Wisdom. I'm your host for this show, Drawing for Tattooers. Um, you know, please let us know in the, in the comments if this is working for you while we're checking out the live streams. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about the network. Uh, welcome to Guy Atchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Network where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are all encouraged to join these live stream real world events to inspire and share, ultimately to create better art and tattoos together. Uh, we beam out nearly every single day, and with your help, we've become a quality network of amazing live and on-demand tattoo shows. This is the time when I like to share my screen with everybody. Uh, yeah, I will, <laughs> I'll share it, uh, this one, <laughs> okay, got some windows open, anyway, yeah, thanks for bearing with me, uh, right, Reinventing the Tattoo Network, um, so you can find, uh, you can find more on Reinventing the Tattoo at reinventingthetattoo.com, uh, you can also find it at, uh, the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store, our YouTube channel, uh, we also have a Roku page. Um, there's uh, 12 to 15 channels going on 24-7. Uh, you can also find this as a podcast on all the major podcast directories, Apple uh, and Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, to search for Reinventing the Tattoo. Um, yeah, and uh, if you're looking for the book, it's out of print. <laughs> you're only going to find it here at ReinventingTheTattoo.com. Um, and so, uh, let's see, I've got some, I've got some exciting stuff to, to share with you. Right. Reinventing the Tattoo is a digital format now, so you can find all of this information here on the website. Um, it's always being updated. So, uh, Special Effects 101, um, this is, uh, one of the offerings, um, so you're always looking to expand your toolkit and nothing beats those quick and simple tricks. Um, they make all the difference. Um, and so uh, you can always check that out in, in the, the canon, right? Uh, that's I think that's maybe a free resource. Check out some of the free resources. Free tattoo courses. Right. So here's some of the free offerings that you can actually, uh, you can check out if you're, if you're thinking about joining Reinventing the Tattoo. Um, so there is a, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's uh, History of Electric Tattooing by Jay Brown. Um, there's another free uh, uh, free longevity of the artist uh, by Durr Morrison. Very cool seminar. Um, and then also these other uh, community resources like the, you know, there's a group that you can always check out as well. Um, and so uh, at this point, let me see, I'd like to talk about uh, some of the shows that we uh, that we get to do here on this uh, Reinventing the Tattoo Network. Um, right. So I scroll down here to the event schedule where you can find um, all of the lineup. So beginning 1 p.m. on Sundays, we had the skill building uh, drawing group hosted by Jason Leeser. That's followed at 9 a.m. Eastern on Mondays, Drawing for Tattooers. That's this show. You made it. Um, at uh, 11 a.m., we have the Tattoo Weekly. That's followed at 5 p.m. on Mondays by Let's Talk About Feelings with Robbie Ripple. Um, 9 p.m. on Mondays, we have the Subscribers Exclusive Drawing Group. Um, let's see. Uh, Wednesdays, 1 p.m., the Tattoo Now Show. And at 6 p.m. on Thursdays, we have uh, the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast. And so, um, you know, again, we have a 
just a number of weekly stable shows that are um, all receiving rave reviews. So, you know, be sure to like, like, subscribe, comment, you know, all your positive reviews are, are much appreciated. Um, and be sure to tag somebody who is interested in tattoos, somebody that you know. Um, right. If you would like to host uh, a Reinventing the Tattoo event or sponsor the community, please email management at reinventingthetattoo.com. And so um, now I'd like to uh, take a minute and uh, thank our sponsors. Um, so yeah, worldtattooevents.com, hmm. the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. Lots of updating and conventions are rescheduling like crazy, right? So you can uh, you know, always keep up with uh, what's new in the world of tattoo events here at worldtattooevents.com. And uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Tattoo Now. Uh, tattoo Now is technology for tattooers, the leading edge in professional development, management, and digital tools for tattooers of all levels. Upgrades competitive with any CRM uh, mailing list software out there. Um, so if you want to take your communication to the next level, uh, check out Tattoo Now and uh, ask for Gabe. Um, and then, of course, uh, we would like to thank Guy Atchison for being the founder and inspiration behind the Reinventing the Tattoo, uh, you know, network, community. Um, you can learn more about Guy Atchison by visiting GuyAtchison.com, where you can find all sorts of products from coil machines to original uh, oil paintings, custom prints, as, uh, um, as well as other uh, tattoo educational content, and his, uh, his uh, portfolio as well. So, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, and, um, and me. So you can find out more about me um, at my website, tattooingwisdom.com. I tattoo at Artistic Skin Designs in uh, Indianapolis. And so, um, love to meet you. Love to, love to work with you. So, um, so let me know. You can um, schedule a tattoo appointment. You can buy some artwork. Um, but yeah, I think that's, uh, that's going to do it. Right. So, hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, so we've got some, looks like the YouTube is working, which is nice. See comments. I'm going to try to keep them on myself so that way I can, uh, that way I can see what's going on. How you doing today, Amber? I'm doing good. How That's, you doing? I'm doing good too. <laughs> yep. Um, it's, uh, my God, it's June already. It's like, uh, I know. time is here and, uh, it's getting, this year is going by so fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, no, time, time flies when you're having fun. I heard that somewhere. So <laughs> It also flies when you've got your nose to the grindstone and you're only paying attention to what you need to do. Yeah, indeed. Um, it's, uh, yeah, time's flying, so we must be having fun. Um, or like you said, grindstoning, you know. <laughs> but um, it's... Uh, no, it's great to have you all here. We got Kyle in the background. Good to see you, Kyle. Uh, good morning. Good morning, peoples. How we doing? Good morning. Yeah, doing great. Um, I uh, was hoping to talk of today a little bit. I've got like another, you know, sort of uh, uh, educational, inspirational uh, chapter in an art book <laughs> to, to talk about. And so um, I'd love to share that with you. Uh, before I do, I want to open up the floor. Does anybody have any, you know, pressing business? Is there any sort of, uh, you know, does anybody have the artwork to share? Any new developments? Um. So with the, I remember I was talking about like uh, going super, like trying to do like a different style for uh, my black and gray buildup. And within that, I found that I think I've been going too deep 
with my tattooing basically my entire career. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, cause, cause now my, like my, my opaque grays are coming in a lot more saturated and solid. My coloring's coming in so much more saturated and solid and a lot less trauma and stuff like that. So it's super exciting stuff. Like I want to tattoo absolutely everything now. Uh, I'm so excited. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's been, it's been huge. Um, cause I've always struggled with like, um, making sure everything's like hundred percent solid. Like I would do absolutely everything I could in my power to do everything to make sure everything was perfect and everything was like a hundred percent and then would heal up and then it'd be like light spots here and there and patchy, patchy, patchy. And it's just, it's super frustrating, but to finally, um, conquer that giant, uh, is freaking huge. So I'm, I'm super excited. I have so many projects coming up that I'm just like, I want to do it now. <laughs> so could you, yeah. Like, uh, could you like go further? Could you talk more about it? What is the, what was the breakthrough for you? What is it that you think is, um, you know, what are you, what do you feel like you're doing differently? Um, I'm, I, I, cause I was always like the vibration, you know, it's one of the chapters in, um, uh, the reinventing or the, one of the topics I, uh, guy discusses and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, vibration. So I was, I was always looking for a very, um, a solid, very intense vibration. And, um, with making sure that I'm still I'm staying within the whole penny nickel range, um, because if we're looking at like one, 1. 1.5 to two millimeters, and that's in between like a basically like a penny and a nickel, you know, you don't want to go deeper than a nickel and around a penny is like a pretty good sweet spot. Um, so with, with doing that and having my needles not out so far, um, and my, the, the vibration is still there, but it's very, it's, it's a lot more gentle of a vibration. Um, so to, to be able to, um, not, not, not so much look for like this consistent, you know, um, solid hard hitting vibration. It, it's just more of like a, Hey, I'm in the skin. It's okay. Everything's fine. You know, it's, it's a lot more subtle of a vibration, but it's still there. So I always, um, took it as a lot more intense, a lot harder, uh, than what it actually is. So, um, it's just, yeah. Um, does that make sense? It does. And so, you know, totally. just, so, just so we can sort of, uh, you know, make sure we're, we're clear about stuff. You're talking about like the actual depth that you're going into, uh, the skin. Yeah. But also, um, uh, there's also like the, the throw, right. Of the, you know, how mm -hmm. far the needles are being thrown out and, mm -hmm. um, there's a certain relationship as far as like, I know if I'm hanging my needles out too far, just depend, you know, because depending on the machine and how, you know, how far the, the throw of it is, uh, I might not actually be like, you know, getting enough ink. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's not coming, you know, I'm not actually, I'm not having a, a good distribution of ink from the, from the tube uh, mm -hmm. to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so I really like what you're saying as far as, you know, you're, you're becoming like really attuned to what is needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only like there's a vibration, but there's also this, uh, this relationship between like having an, you know, having enough like sort of needle in the, in the, you know, the ink reservoir, you know, it's, it's sitting in the, sitting, sitting in the puddle of ink, mm -hmm. it's making enough holes mm -hmm. that it's, you know, it's doing, it's, uh, it's doing what it has to do. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's because right. It's like, it, it's not that the needle, you know, we need, we hang our needles out so we can see them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's not so that it goes so deep. Right. That's the, you know, yeah. this is a basic thing, but it's certainly, um, it's one of those things that I feel like we're probably always working on it. You know what I mean? And like, I'm, I'm excited. Like, you know, again, like later on, you'll think, you'll think like, oh, I, th I thought I had it back then, but, but now I really get it. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> as we, as we learn, as we like sort of uh, get it, gain more experience and stuff, there's like, like this sort of, you know, this new level for you, um, which is super exciting. is like, there's going to be more, right. There's going to be, there's going to be even greater levels and stuff after this. And so I think, um, you know, that's a part of what, you know, that's what is making sense. That's what's resonating with me with what you're saying. It's, um, it's awesome, dude. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's, it's exciting stuff for damn sure. So, 
yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. Good. Yeah, very good. I've been seeing a lot of uh, um, on social media and stuff. A lot of our, you know, tattooers are they're posting stuff. Uh, that's you know, it's like this has been this has been healed for ten years, right? Yeah, or they've yeah, been yeah. Healed for fifteen years or something like that, and they're trying to either they're trying to either demonstrate like how well they did or how poorly, you know what I mean? That's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, there's also the, um, learning from both. Mm-hmm. There's sort of learning from, uh, from both ends of that spectrum. And so it's, um, yeah, again, it's really kind of, a um, you just, you don't know, right. Exactly. What's going to, you know, have longevity. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course I feel like, uh, we're getting back to the idea of tone and stuff like that. We're getting back to the idea of like, you know, again, it's like Posnag relationships, the, um, the, the scheme that you make up, the, the plan that you make up for, mm-hmm. uh, how you render stuff or how much black ink to use. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if, if there's too much, there's just too much. I mean, you'll always have a dark, you know, it's <laughs> something, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if it's, you know, if it's, even if you have like all these, you know, beautiful light colors and it does fade out over time, you could always refresh it, I suppose. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? It's, um, mm-hmm. If it stayed perfect forever, that would be the ultimate. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. One day? No. <laughs> One day, right? <laughs> yeah. But then, um, I don't know. Yeah. What do you, what do you both think about that? The, you know, this question, this longevity versus, um, I guess, uh, that's the old saying, you know, bold will hold, but what is that? You know, like, how can we interpret that to mean, you know, something that's like, or, or do we have to sacrifice, um, you know, something that would be of an aesthetic value, right? You know what I mean? Just because we like, we want it to be this, we want it to be dark for long enough. You know what I mean? It's like where you can see mm-hmm. it, you can see a dark, you know, smudge on your body. Um, Versus like, you know, something that's, uh, it's bold, it's there as a foundation. It could always be sort of, you can always give another <coughs> pass of color or something like that. I guess I'm, I'm sort of like phrasing it a certain way. <laughs> but what do you, what do you both think about this? Where's the... Well, I don't know. Like, I mean, like if the client like never goes outside ever again, like <laughs> everything will hold. So sure. there's that. Um, there was, uh, uh, my, uh, my mentor, uh, he had a friend that he tattooed and he did some biomech on his leg and he packed a lot of yellow in there. Um, and this guy, he works concrete. Um, and he just, he's always wearing pants. He never wears shorts, nothing like that. Always wearing pants. Yellow looks great. And it's like 15 years old. Like it's, it's old. Like it's, it's, it's been in there for a long time and the yellow still looks great from what I remember. So, um, the whole like I, I guess like the bold will hold thing it's like a it's almost like an all-terrain tire I guess like that it's gonna it's gonna be there and it's gonna work through a lot of um bumps cracks whatever that I don't I'm working on this analogy as I'm talking so bear with me <laughs> um how do you how do you put it how do you put it uh like the bold will hold with like big black lines and a uh, solid color pack that the, the, the value is a bit darker. So it's going to hold up well over, um, over time um, through like sun damage and all, you know, skin aging, all that stuff like that, like all those variables. Um, but I guess like it, 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 my brain went blank. So you guys continue. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of learning the difference between bold and subtle now because my first mentor taught me black and gray with just black mm-hmm. and you control it with the subtlety of your hand and the stretch of your skin. Mm-hmm. Well, my new mentor uses a gray wash set and trying to convert to a gray wash set when you're used to doing it with just black, it, it's definitely a learning curve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, hundred percent. Because you know you're you're expecting your tones and values to come out the specific way because this is what you're used to, and then mm-hmm. up, you're basically relearning that whole process. And it's I got to bring some of my skins home so you can see what I've been doing at the shop. Please, I keep please forgetting. Please do. Love I'm excited to see. To that. Uh, uh, 
for a couple of weeks, I was doing nothing but lettering and it was driving me nuts. <laughs> I mean, I was getting it. Eventually I nailed it, but it was just driving me nuts. I'm like, I'll even do a rose. Just give me something else to do. So we started getting into the black and gray. And the first one I did, I completely forgot about the gray wash set and just did it in black. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, shit, I'm supposed to be doing gray <laughs> wash, not just black. Well, I think this is a, this is a great segue into the, you know, the, the thing I was hoping to share with, uh, with the group today and with our viewers. Um, so if, uh, if you'll humor me. Um, Absolutely. Uh, hold on a second here. Uh, let me see if I can't. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, I think maybe now. Um, ah, yes, this. Let's share this. Okay. Ah. So. Nice. Can everybody see? Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, so this is from a chapter in Andrew Loomis's book, uh, Drawing for All It's Worth. I try to kind of mix it up with the books, right? Like, there's always this sort of rule of, uh, you know, like, you can't just, uh, especially books that are copyrighted and stuff, you can't just sort of, like, just share the whole thing. You know what I mean? So every semester, <laughs> you know, I, every semester I try to do a chapter or two from each one. So I'm trying hard to kind of, you know, like, to divvy it out amongst all of the there's so much great information out there and you know it's kind of like uh how do you how do you navigate it and, and so anyway the, you know i'm just trying to share some of the things that i think are really uh you know uh valuable for us right anyway what we're presenting today is a sort of a it's a concept we're conceptualizing about tones and and so what did they mean Right, when we talk about shading and tones and you know, and this sort of idea, this bold behold idea, which I think all of that stuff um, uh, can be so easily kind of like misconstrued, and and what I mean is like that we're not, you know, we sort of adopt it as like a some kind of a a wisdom that we just sort of get. I get it, you know, and that's it. It's a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a never ending subject. You're always kind of working with it. You're trying to work to understand it. So anyway, in this abstraction, I really feel like uh, there might be something that kind of uh, um, uh, could become really valuable, you know, through thinking about it, right? So anyway, so um, planes, right? I'll read along and then we'll look at some of these examples and hopefully it'll kind of help make sense about some stuff. Uh, planes, Andrew Lewis writes, planes are theoretical flattening of rounded forms as well as actual flat areas. In art, an extreme smoothness and roundness of form uh, that uh, tends towards the slick and photographic, it should be avoided like the measles, he says. <laughs> Very nice, right? Um, okay, so the use of planes gives more of an individual quality. No two artists will see planes alike. Squareness of rounded forms uh, imparts a certain ruggedness and vitality. A good axiom is see how square you can make the round. Okay, so now we've got uh, all of these. Um, try to try my best to yeah, so I can see. All right, yeah. So uh, here we have like a, it's like a cylindrical form. You know, we can see it up here uh, in the upper left, but it has all these flat planes to it. Right, and so this is the concept, and uh, and so in its most you know its most basic, um, and I think this is helpful, right? Rather than like I got to make it all rounded, or you know, as far as like where do I put the half tone, where do I put the the shadow, um, we're just sort of thinking about like its its relationship to a light source. Light is coming from some direction. Basically, what these planes do is they're indexing; they're letting the viewer know where the light is. Right, so we can see that, and then uh, so um, the side view, uh, and then this top view, right? Again, sort of this idea, direction of the light. It's hitting this. Uh, it's hitting one of these planes, basically at a perpendicular way, right? It's, just, it's striking it directly, and then over here on the sides, we can see where the light is just passing by. It's it's completely, you know, these planes here that are darkest, they're completely parallel to the way that the light is traveling. So. Um, right. Anyway, but, you know, here and over here, we'll jump over here to the 
this little note on the right hand side there is no set rule for planes you draw them uh, as you think best to suit the subject um, and so um, again these are simplified sort of planes on this form but uh, what it I think what it does is it kind of helps you to sort of navigate like you know if you've ever again we were talking about roses a lot last week edge definition and stuff um, and then also like if you ever go to to render a portrait or something like that um, it can just be you can get sort of lost in that smoothness right you're trying to make it all smooth and rounded um, I think if if you think about the planes what you know what sort of flat spot even if it doesn't exist is like really uh, uh, perpendicular to the light the most right that's going to get the most light and then so on and so forth as far as like you know how much light it receives all right so uh, the light planes are those in full light and the half tone planes are those in the half light the passage tone you know these are, these are just sort of invented phrases mm -hmm. that they, they help us understand um, uh, but I mean they all are so and the passage tone is that which merges the half tone and the shadow uh, and then the reflective is the lightest tone in the shadow um, again I, you know in this example up here we can we can see like the light is coming from one direction on the you know the extreme to the extreme like opposite side we can see that there's a, a little bit of lightness and that's the lightest spot in the shadow that that would be the reflected light and we'll see more about that uh, in a bit Okay, so over here on the left, we have this uh, squared, right, in quotes, the rounded figure into planes, right? The purpose is to use them as a basis for rendering light, halftone, and shadow in the simplest terms. At the same time, preserving the main structural forms, when we soften the edges, the planes, to the degree that we deem them satisfactory. So there's going to be a transition, right? You're going to maybe grade eight things out, but it's you know it's it's to try to keep the dark the very very dark things out of the light right and keep the light things out of the dark right and that i think this is bold will hold if that makes sense right i think that's what this means right if we can really we can really sort of figure out like what is going to be the the darkest dark um uh we're going to end up you know describing a form that will last you know will hold right uh planes are primarily uh uh, carving of the surface form, right? So, you know, again, it's, it, you can think about this like in sculpture, right? How you might sort of, you know, maybe chop up the, chop up, you know, some, some mass and make it, you know, make it like closer to, to what it is that you're going to want to have. Um, but again, you know, you, you'll, you'll achieve that roundness like over time rather than like sort of going through it right away. Okay, so more about the planes, right? Uh, there is no set planes which will fit the figure at all times. Since the surface form changes with the movement, such as bending at the waist, movement of the shoulders, etc., the planes are given mainly to show how the form can be simplified. Even when you have a live model or the copy or the photographic reference, uh, you still work from the main planes of light, half tone and shadow. Otherwise, uh, you may have an overpowering confusion of tones. Again, we're not really seeing any tones yet, but, you know, I think we can, we're starting to, you know, sort of understand, like, how we may go about, like, arranging them. You know, if, if you just sort of, you know, like, discern um, where you might abstract the planes on a given sort of uh, object, you could put the light in any spot, and then that will help you sort of know how you may render it. Again, we'll see a little bit more of that later. Um, he says this, uh, remember when working without a model or a copy, you draw the planes for the light, half tone and shadow. When working with the model or copy, you draw the planes from the light, half tone or shadow. Hmm. So I think I'm kind of interpreting that to mean that um, uh, if you're inventing it, you're, you know, you're drawing these planes out so that way you can figure out where, you know, uh, where your shadows will be. But when you're looking at life or you're looking at a photographic reference, you can obviously see where the darkest things are, right? So you don't want to put the dark stuff in where the, the you know, the light plane will be, um, so on and so forth. So, all right, so we've got these, you know, and I apologize for the quality of the scan here, but 
we can see illustration of what you know what's been you know discussed earlier. Um, so the light flat lighting this direct um, and the the shadow um, again is, uh, is is being cast um, that gives us a bit of depth. You know, there's some some edge definition. There's a, there's a distinct edge between the top of this sort of head form and the you know the background. Um, and so uh, what we're doing, you know, he, he mentions it's flattening it out. We're not really seeing the you know as many of the planes. It's almost like uh, um, you know like that cylinder, that flattened cylinder that we saw earlier. It's like such a big light source that it's you know it's sort of hitting all of the edges and and not really you know, giving us much of that description of planes. Um, underneath, right, if we have a second example, like light is sort of shining underneath, we lose that, you know, that cast a shadow underneath. Um, and then as the, as the form starts to turn, we can see like, you know, where the top of the, you know, where the top of this mannequin head should be, right? We're sort of developing like a half tone and then into the deep shadow. And so it's like we lose that whole, you know, that uh, whole, upper part, right, all the edge definition sort of, you know, merges in with the background and the shadow. Um, and it says uh, stage or dramatic, weird, ghostly like light form. Um, I think, I'm thinking of like, you know, if you hold a flashlight uh, mm -hmm. under your face and tell, a, you know, tell like a ghost story or something like <laughs> it's that kind of an idea, right? It's, it's, it's strange to us because we were so conditioned to see light coming from above or, you know, you know, from an upper angle that when it's sort of really shining from underneath, it does give it a sort of a, you know, there's a strange sort of appearance to it. Um, three quarter lighting. This is good because it, again, we were talking about like how it, we can describe the, the planes of something that's rounded. And, and so having a de, you know, definitive side that's really getting more light and then less side, so on. And so uh, the other side's not getting as much light um, gives us more opportunity to describe, uh, you know, the roundedness of the form through the planes. Um, so again, just even more examples of this three-quarter light. Uh, you can see them here, right? How they're, you know, as the light is being, you know, sort of cast onto these forms. Um, and the you know, fifth example we can see uh, light is shining from the top, right? And it's reflecting right off this table surface and hitting underneath. So again, there's that reflected light. You can see it in the chin area. This is essentially telling us, right, that this is, um, it's, it's directly opposite of the light source, but light is being, you know, it's being reflected back from some surface uh, up onto the chin, um, you know, just as a sort of a proof of this concept that we see it, we, we do see it in nature all the time. Um, we see it in real life. Um, and then even more, so edge, edge lighting. And edge lighting, again, is, it's very, uh, I find it really tricky to do in tattooing, but, uh, but we see it in, you know, um, Guy Atchison's able to pull it off in his work, Nick Baxter, mm -hmm. pull it off in his work. Many people can really do it. And I think, uh, so if you practice it on paper, <laughs> you know, like learn how to make it work for you, uh, it can create incredibly, you know, uh, striking um, effects uh, in your uh, in your artwork if you understand how to make this, um, you know, this edge lighting really work for you. And so, um, again, uh, positive negative, right? And this is this is dynamic, this is moving from a, you know. Uh, there's this, it's all, every edge has a bit of the, has a bit of the light on it. Um, but as we get over here, like there's just a, a, a small passage, right, right where the, you know, you, so the sternal notch, right where you sort of think about the clavicles, um, where it's in front of the table, right? So table's more of a negative kind of, uh, negative light. And then uh, the, the form, of the mannequin's clavicles is more of a, a positive dark and so um, we have this this dynamic movement which is really you know can be really effective and beautiful um number seven here 
this this one sort of describing you know like sort of equal lights from both directions this is uh um it's kind of strange like in appearance and we don't we don't uh see it um very often right it's it it, 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 it you would actually have to calibrate it very carefully in order to have two light sources that are exactly the same strength and so generally what that does is it makes the reflected light sort of too strong and makes the highlight too weak and it, it can be a, a bit strange looking in appearance so um in a photograph you know it's like it's kind of easy to see what's going on but when we are uh um when we're trying to render something that can be very um you can get kind of muddy exactly right um all flat right this is uh excess lighting and stuff again with photography you may sort of find that that is something that uh um it is effective right um but as far as like rendering purposes go um it can be very very difficult to achieve very much so um because we're not we're not cameras right we are we're human beings and so um there's a certain degree of uh you know, nuance that, uh, you know, we, we may never actually be able to achieve. And so, um, and so, uh, the thought here is that like, you want to try to make it, you know, your light a little bit more dramatic and that can really help. Um, again, this, this last example sort of showing us, um, uh, let's see, it's a, I'll, I'll read it for you here. It says, uh, um, half and half, right? Uh, bad areas of light and shadow should never be equal. Uh, give them one of the edges, right? So um, again, like if it's like, even if there's a little bit of light here in the dark or there's some sort of quality to the background that will give you, you know what I mean? Like sort of an edge definition there. Um, that's that's gonna be preferable to, you know, sort of completely losing it in the shadow. Just again, for the purposes of, uh, uh, you know, of, of rendering. But, um, you know, like rules are meant to be confronted, <laughs> I suppose. And so you may actually find that there's something valuable here in, in all these examples. But again, these are, these are sort of principles to, to think about um, and to consider as, you're, um, as you are going about like lighting your own um, uh, references or uh, sort of finding references. Right. You might go ask Google for an image and uh, and so find something that is, you know, like it looks beautiful in color or whatever the, you know, the sort of the composition of it's great. But as far as the lighting goes, it may not be very uh, um, applicable. You know, it may not it may not work as well to uh, to render it. So these are sort of considerations that you can you should have before uh, sort of jumping in. Um, can you can you achieve what it is you're setting out to achieve? And so um, so here's just some, you know, just giving us a little bit of insight into, you know, what's happening. Uh, all of the images we've shown have a, a called off-camera light source, right? It's not included in the image where the light's coming from. We just could, we can just infer where the light's coming from based on how the form has been illuminated. So, I'll read this for us here. Lighting. Here the camera lends us a hand by showing the actual light as it falls on a simplified form. The form has been rounded to give you the gradation uh, from light through half tone to shadow. Uh, number one is a front lighting corresponding to the treatment of a flat and unshaded outline drawing. Uh, the only shadow under the chin occurs because the light has been raised a little bit uh, to allow the camera to be placed under it. Uh, I think maybe we're, uh, yeah, we're talking about the, the ones that we, we already looked at here. Um, so, uh, uh, the only shadow, da 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 a little bit, da, da, uh, camera and light, of course, could not have been placed in the identical spot. Had this been possible, there would have been no shadow and all flatness. So this makes me think about like a, um, you know, like a flash on a camera, right? It's like the flash is almost, is almost in the same place as the lens it's almost you know what i mean so there's a little shadow but if it's exactly you know if somehow you could have the, the light source coming from the you know the lens you wouldn't have any uh you would have no shadow right 
um, uh, had this been possible, there would have been no shadow, and all flat or formless lighting may be obtained by uh, piling, by <laughs> piling an equal lighting from uh, every direction, right? So just putting lighting coming in from every direction, you'll have this, you know, sort of formless, all absolute light, which is, you know, kind of nothing. When there's a single light source on the object, the shadow side reflects some of the light in a luminous manner. The reflected light areas within the shadow, however, will never be uh, come competitive with the areas in the light and the unity of the masses of light as opposed to the masses of the shadow is maintained, right? So having a highlight, it's like the king of the lights, right? It's the strongest light and then reflected light underneath. It's not as strong. And there's all sorts of phrases. There's all sorts of analogies that work like the, you know, the, the lightest dark is darker than the darkest light, right? That sort of a thing, right? I think we've mm -hmm. heard that one before. That's helpful. Keep it in mind. Um, but the, uh, the whole object there is just to, uh, um, to give you some difference. And in, and in order to maintain the unity of that difference, that's what that, um, that's what that analogy is sort of talking about. Um, <clears throat> uh, right. In drawing nothing within the shadow area, should uh, the light ever, uh, sorry, should ever be as light as within the light area because reflected light is never so strong as its source. One exception might be uh, with the use of a mirror. That, however, would be a duplication of light source rather than a reflection, refraction. The dazzling light upon water is another example of refraction. Um, simple lighting, uh, which means lighting from a single source and the reflected light on that source is the most perfect lighting that there is. Uh, it renders the form in its actual contours and bulk. True modeling of form cannot be approached any other way since to change the normal or true value of the plane is to change or upset the form. If the value is off, the form is incorrect. Since the photographer may not have reasoned this out, uh, it is better to make your own photographs or at least supervise the lighting of any photographic copy. The photographer hates shadows and the artist loves them. I think that's mm. uh, something that we've been talking about. Um, right, so here's some, so back up a little bit so we can see the illustrations a little bit better. All right, so simple lighting on the figure. Um, and I'll back up a little bit more so we can read. Okay, so here we see the figure and uh, there is some tone, right, in the light is sort of rendering the, uh, the musculature. But again, we're, you know, we're seeing this dramatic shift, right, from light to dark. Again, we had this conversation earlier. We we're talking about this idea. Bold will hold. Perhaps this is the way to think of it, um, where you have some, you have some, some true black, some dark, you know, rendering in places. Um, but then again, you're not putting all of the same tone everywhere. Even in even in this, you know, we can see the sort of roughed in outline. There, there is some. There's certainly getting a little closer. Like over here on the elbow side on the left, and then the back here of the triceps and the back of the deltoid here, we can see a very bold, strong edge, a line, you know, essentially. And then we can try contrast that to this, um, this other, you know, sort of on the medial side here, we can see that it's it's much much finer, much much lighter line, um, and then also like. Uh, all the way lateral on the on the edge of the um, the edge of the arm, you know, by the by the ulna, we could see much much finer line. And again, sort of the same kind of concept over here. And what I like too about this, you know, the second the middle illustration, we can see clearly this difference. I'll zoom in really quick. Like there's a difference in the the character of the shadows right here, right? Like we can see that there's a shadow that's defining or, or you know, describing the, the contour of the arm, right? It's roundedness, again, but planar, in a, in a planar way, there's a certain spot where the, you know, the form is turned away from the light source and we're getting this reflected light. 
But then here on this, you know, just inside of, of this, uh, you know, where the arm is covering over uh, the rib cage, it's a much darker, harder edge, right? You see the, sh the firm edge and then the really, really dark shadow. This refers to a cast shadow, right? So form shadow, cast shadow, or drop shadow, if you like. I think you could sort of call them, maybe it's, maybe it's dropped here and then cast it over here, right? Um, and so, and it would make sense, right? Like, you know, any light that would be reflected, you know, is reflected off of a reflection. <laughs> so light's not really getting in there as, uh, as readily. And then these really sharp, again, a, a very strong outline, but here in the very middle of the form, right? A really strong, uh, you know, sort of, it's, it's a shadow, but it's also a line. And so, uh, we can kind of clearly see, um, the difference, right? This, this is the darkest dark here. And then of course this side is more shadow, but it doesn't have as the same amount of, uh, of dark rendering. And, uh, right. So draw the shadows first, then the half tones cast shadows are darkest. Uh, do not make the form shadows, uh, too black, right? Too dark, uh, model the shadow from light. Keep all the half tones lighter than the shadows. Don't over model the light. I think that's basically what we were just sort of talking about. Um, all right, last last page, and then I'll you know leave you alone. Uh, true modeling of the rounded form. The simplest way to explain the fundamental principle of rendering light and shadow is to think of a ball with light focused upon it as the sun uh, lights the earth. The area of the ball closest to the light, the highlight, comparable to noon. And if we move the surface of the sphere away from any of the highlight in any direction, we find the light begins uh, imperceptibly to fade into halftone area. So we can see as illustrated, A is the highlight, and then B is this halftone area. Very, very, it's very light. Halftone is, you know, it's it's not really half, it's, you know, it's, it's much less than half, but again, you know, that's just the term. We can see it's it's very imperceptibly changing right from a to b it's it's a very very subtle change um when compared to twilight uh and we have to the last light uh b plus and on tonight c if there is nothing to reflect the light there is true darkness um however if the moon is a reflector of the sun's light uh comes up uh, it will reflect the light into the shadow all right so i think we're you know we're having this sort of this example of the earth and the sun and then what we can sort of see or what we can you know imagine would be um, again the highlight changing into half tone it's becomes much much darker very quickly until C right we can see the C is this would be the the idea is the core shadow or the area where the form is completely turned away from the light again we saw earlier how the light was passing by um, you know parallel to the to the object and then d reflected light on the surface of the table it's reflecting back but if the moon was there reflecting light back or you know whatever uh that's that's when you would get it if there was nothing really reflecting it back then you wouldn't really see it'd be in more of an edge right we have this edge lighting situation a dark edge and then um you know highlight so um anyway uh, when light is intercepted by a body, its silhouette falls upon the adjacent light plane. This, the darkest of the shadows, is called the cast shadow. So this sphere sitting on table surface or whatever has a cast shadow. Again, um, sort of looking at that relationship, like this form shadow is, is, you know, it gets really dark. Maybe an area, you know, that's comparable, this, you know, this core shadow here versus like the cast shadow here. There may be sort of a similarity, but um, rounded, sort of soft edged. And then this cast shadow, it's a much firmer edge, right? It's a very sharp edge in places. And then it's considerably darker as it gets underneath the form. Um, uh, it is still possible, however, for a cast shadow to pick up some reflected light. Um, and so, uh, the artist should be able to look at any given place on a subject and determine which area it belongs, the light, the halftone, the shadow, or the reflected light. 
Correct values must be given in order to obtain the unity and organization of these four fundamental areas. Otherwise, a drawing will not hold together. Treatment of light gives a drawing cohesion uh, no less than a structural form. There are many things you can learn from photographs if you use them intelligently. Remember, however, that uh, the range of light to dark is much greater um, in the eye than pigment. You cannot possibly put down the full range. Um, you have to simplify it. Again, I think that was what we were trying to say earlier with this idea of what a photograph can do. It can, it can give us you know, so much more subtlety than we're able to really sort of achieve. Um, now there are people who are, you know, they can work uh, in a photorealist sort of way. And um, again, uh, I would say that there are probably areas where they might be cheating, where they're, you know, where they're probably, you know, are simplifying just a little bit. Um, but again, like perhaps that's up for debate. There is though, I think going to be um, a real uh, value in this sort of the simplifying again. So that way you can use your photo references rather than, you know, than them just being the, you know, what dominate you. Um, that might be, that might be preferable. So, ah, yes, we've got a, I have a, um, Elise has a, hopped into the chat. Knowledge and study of anatomy can help with discerning where to place the tones because gaining familiarity with the muscles and bones uh, that are below the skin. Exactly, Elise. Love that. Um, so again, what we're, what we're talking about is, you know, a, like knowing your subject and figuring out how that you can render it. And again, I, I like this sort of idea of, you know, the, the mold will hold. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, but <laughs> that's it for, uh, that's it for this one. So thank you for checking that out. And I, you know, um, that's, um, uh, if these are, these are sort of topics that we've covered before that you're really familiar with, I always sort of find, um, uh, I always find something new every time I revisit, every time that I, uh, every time that I, consider them, ponder them. I'm always learning something from it. And so, um, and that's why I think that, that's why I think everybody, you know, tunes in. That's why I think you all are here as well, because you're getting something from, uh, you know, working with this very difficult material. It seems simple. It seems so rudimentary. It is, uh, it's, I think in a way, some of the most difficult stuff. It's simple, not easy. True. Yeah, true that. Hmm. So um, this is uh, this is what I wanted to present today was to sort of continue on this idea. We, you know, last week we were talking about edges. And I think this is a nice integration of not only like edge, but what do you do with them? What are the what are what are these edges? It's a very sort of like simplified or um, just edges, right, last week. But this starts to integrate this idea of like that there is a particular light source and there are particular edges which are going to give us more information. So when we want to think about a bold will hold, I would... I would like to, you know, like include some of this thinking about how light and shadow um, operate, how they how they inform one another. Because if it's all light, that's nothing. If it's all dark, that's nothing. So how do you make something out of this nothing? <laughs> how does it become what it needs to be? And it's there's a there's a unity that happens, and it's um, I think that it's probably uh, something that it takes a lot of, you know, you have to, it has to really be intentional, it has to really be considered. Um, and there's, again, there might be some simplification, there might be some stylization that you do to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Because um, we're always going to be abstracting from something. Because uh, we're not, you know, 
any image. It's not, it's not the real thing. I mean, it's an image. It is that, but it's not the thing it claims to be, right? Like you tattoo a skull on somebody, it's not a skull, it's an image in the shape of a tattoo of a, of a skull. Or we get that, right? But at the same time, it's like, can't be perfect. Can't be the thing. Right? It has to be, you know, it's, it's a representation. And so these are the um, things to keep in mind. Right. <laughs> so, but anyway, yes, I, uh, I would love it if anybody, um, has anything to add questions or, you know, I love seeing your artwork. Um, you know, please, by all means, open the floor. It just really makes me think that I need to not adhere to the reference so dang much. Um, because like, I don't know, looking at tattoos that I've done and stuff like that, and then talking about the, the anatomy of the shadowing and everything like that, it's like, I need to be treating these, how do I put it? Um, the tattoo is more important than like the picture reference, I guess. It's like the picture references you go off of it, but you do like all the adjustments and everything like that on on the tattoo. I don't I don't know how to put it. Um, because like the the whole oh gosh what what you said like what was in that book the the photographer hates shadows and the artist loves them. So with all like if, especially in the, the the circumstance of realism if it's it's i don't know how the how the heck to put it um and it's not even like a uh, adjusting the 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 curve of the, the 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 brightness and the shadowing and everything like on photoshop or in uh, in uh, procreate and everything like that it's um it's like enhancing certain shadows in certain areas um, to, to, to help the form, it's, it's overall, the overall form to help that out compared to just looking at what's on the, the picture and trying to replicate it onto the tattoo. Um, because yeah, that, 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 that would make sense why like um, you tattoo right off the, the, the reference and your tattoo kind of comes out looking a little bit flat. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you have to push the contrast further to make it a solid tattoo. Yeah, yeah, the contrast. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just really, really working with the contrast, yeah. You got to learn the rules like a lawyer so you can break them like an artist. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, contrast James, means different. James, I just sent you on Instagram. I sent I, you one of my kids. I, I, I see forgot that. I a picture. And so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to share. Um, this is, uh, uh -huh. this is one of your. Roses are like the bane roses. of my existence. I never do them well. So I am really proud of this. This is like the first rose I've done that I'm actually happy with. And I'm like, yeah, that actually looks like a rose and not a jumble of shit. <laughs> looks really, really good, Amber. Thank you. Yes, it does look really nice. That's um, me learning the difference between just using black and getting into the black and gray set. Outstanding. Yeah, like, well, um, love to hear you talk about like your thinking you know what i mean like what were you what was it that you were uh um uh, sort of considering as you um were making this because it's i think there's a there's a lot to talk about with this but we'd love to I'd love to hear you your experience with it what we were thinking about well before when i just did it in black i would render each petal completely and then go on to the next pedal. But working with, you know, a gray wash set, you go, I had to learn to go in and do all my darks and then do the next value and then the next value and then render my edges at the end. Mm -hmm. 
I love it. Um, there's also uh, there's also a lot of technique that you're using here as well. Um, there's a direction, you know, of all of the shading. It looks like maybe you you were using a liner possibly to yes, three liner. And uh, so, um, yeah, talk about that, like the the direction and stuff, and what what is that? <laughs> what can we? I kind of, because I didn't really have a reference other than a grainy photo, I really kind of thought more about what it would look like in real life and how the direction of the petals would go naturally and tried to show that and the texture in the whip shape. Uh, I definitely see that in it. Um, I definitely see the... Um, you know, the, the the definition, right? Everything is sort of distinct. One thing that- Yeah, I'm I, learning how to transition from lines to edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I think is really effective too is there's a slightly darker, more concentrated edge line here um, as like sort of the bud of the rose, like this top edge of it is mm -hmm. sort of coming out, you know, towards us. Um, towards the viewer, you know, in a, a very direct way. And, um, uh, and so I think that's, I think that's really effective. Um, yeah. And then like, it does get deeper and darker here. Um, when it's like, you know, it's more closed up. Right. And there's just, yeah, I feel middle. like I need to put more dark in that middle. That's one of my biggest things. I don't always go dark enough. I need to push my darks darker. And I'm learning to do that now. So what do you think about the, you know, do you think that the grainy photograph, you know, like the, do you think that helped? Or was that more of a hindrance? What do you think? I don't know. I think it helped because it, it made me focus more on in my mind what it would look like in real life mm -hmm. because i took this example from a tattoo that was already done mm -hmm. and sure. i didn't want it to make it look like the tattoo i wanted to make it look like a rose mm -hmm. so i kind of looked at other examples of roses and you know what the textures were like and how the directions went on the petals and kind of put that in it Yeah, it's very effective. I love that texturing and, and especially the, the, the directional. It's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, so, this is uh, um, it's beautiful work, and I think you know it's. Uh, um, I could see, I could see, a, you know, someone being very happy getting this tattoo. Mm -hmm. For real, you know what I mean? Like you go in for. Sometimes, I mean, <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. roses turn out like a like a mess. Yes. Sometimes roses are like, again, this is we're talking about. It's a simple thing. It's very simple, um, you know, ideas, and it's you know, what a maze, right? Like a, a rose, it's like a maze. Like, how do you navigate this crazy labyrinth? It's a simple, beautiful thing, right? But that's in in that is is you know is all of the is this complexity where right? it's very complex really and yeah. so um, and to have something that has you know so much a uh, closeness to to a naturalistic appearance to it um but again rendered in tattoo um very challenging um we can't erase with tattoo you know that's the that's our it's it's one of the conditions. It's it's something you sign up for. <laughs> mm -hmm. No erasing, right? Once you get it, you're taking it with you when you go. Sure, you can uh, laser it off, but uh, it's still there. You know, it's, it's yep. still always there. So, um, but anyway, I think this is uh, uh, keep it up. That's all mm -hmm. I can. That's all I can say. You know what I mean? It's like this is a. Uh, um, I'm 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 always practicing roses too. I'd have to do them on people, and it's like 
I always want to, you know, <laughs> you always learn from it. I think you yeah. always can learn and there's always something you could do a little bit uh, more effectively. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. As I'm looking at it now, I'm looking at things I'd like to go back in and render darker and put a little more detail in. Get a sharper uh, edge on those leaves. Yeah, taking a step back again is very uh, um, useful. It's very, uh, you know, uh, informative. So that way, you know, you have a, you know, mm, you don't get too fixated on one particular thing. Yeah. It's so easy, right? And that's when that's when you overwork stuff. So um, this uh, this is really nice. I'm I'm so pleased that you shared it because um, I I'm gonna have to try it. I don't do much of the you know like rendering with the liner needle. It was just, it's just not something that I have much experience with. It's not uh, something I've done a lot either. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be very, uh, um, quite fashionable, but I think there's also something that can be really effective about it. Cause you can, you know, basically just, you know, you can use gray wash, but you can also just do it with black, mm. and, you know, essentially you might come up with something that has that longevity that we've really been talking about if you can cleverly place the the rendering effectively you know you might you might end up coming up with something that's going to last you know uh it's going to hold up uh, effectively for somebody's entire life um color is like on is supported by value by tonal yeah. value but the you know the uh the value itself um can really be something that's um you know it, it tells this it tells the story um and so i don't know it's love it thank you so much amber that's that's fantastic thank you yeah of course i appreciate that well i'm glad to see your apprenticeship is going so well you know mm -hmm. we we definitely looked at your um um your mentors and their work and so i can see i can see yeah, I'm they're having an learning influence. from the right guys yeah they're having a really great influence on you um and that's one thing but you have to be working hard in order to to be able to do that sort of a thing what you just showed us so um so i don't want to take away from what your accomplishment i just want to say like you you put yourself in a good place surround yourself with really quality you know like mentorship mm. and so this is something that's going to be uh you'll be glad you did it mm -hmm. oh i'm already glad i did it that's i it. love it i can't wait to go to the shop every week it's my favorite place to be oh yeah that's awesome um well so if anybody else any other uh any other things that we want to get on to today mm -hmm. I guess, like, I'll show you, like, a, a traditional rose that I did. Um, yeah, let's see it. Especially see with that. I, I might be able to, let me see. Uh, I think, I think you could share if you would like. If you can't, then I'll see if I have to change some settings. Yeah. Make sure that OBS is working. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, I love that. Look at that. And that was with the not going so deep and just everything coming out, just like super saturated. It's so bright. smooth. Yeah, it, it, it's just it's bananas. Like the pixelation on the the needles and everything like that. Um, it just comes out. The, like the the they come out smaller, which is fine. But like it just yeah, it just I was I was just kind of impressed with it because of like how bright the reds are. I'd love to see it healed. I want to see how it heals. And these people, they've been, they're a great couple and they come in quite often. So I, I'll be able to see it again here soon. And I'm really hoping and hoping and hoping that it, it heals up good. Um, and it's just- I think it will. Here's bright, so. It's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank it's, you. 
American traditional scares me. It Dude. looks so simple, but it's not. Those bold one pass lines. Which is which is like so important, you know, because like I've done the mm -hmm. whole like line work and stuff like that. And it's just it definitely like it's not as clean um with the one pass. Um that's for sure. And like the simplicity of the the traditional, I think is um it's admirable because like there's so many things that you could put into it, but like, okay, so I can do that, but like, should I type of thing? Um, because like I've always done like, oh, put stuff in the leaves and this, that, and the other thing. And I was looking at some references and it's just like there's like there's like nothing in it, it's just color, you know? So it's like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense because then if like if I do too much into the leaves, that's gonna take away from the rows. So let's just keep those just color and solid because then like they're just like an after effect. They're not like a hundred percent the focal point you know um and then yeah just just black red and skin tone like, like just it's crazy like the, the 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 genius of the simplicity of it yeah um yeah i think that there is a uh, um really a, a nice distribution of the dark Right, and it's it it describes something. Mm -hmm. um, so, it really is a the, it's it's the shadow, sort of being described, and uh, you know, and all the and the leaves become very close. You know, they become like a part like on the same kind of plane as the you know where the you know the petals and stuff exist, and so um, the the color is so saturated and so beautiful. Um, I kind of feel like, uh, you know, as I'm, as I'm looking at this, it's, uh, it, it really like, um, it really has all of the things we were sort of talking about, even though it's stylized, even though it has this, mm -hmm. you know, it's like sort of abstract simplified in this way, it still has the, it still has all of the perspective, right? I can, you know, I can reach different things. Um, the, uh, yeah, very cool. Yes. The, um, the bud of the rose, right? There's no, you know, there's outline, but there isn't any black, you know, uh, rendering in it. And it sort of moves to the front. It just, because of, you know, again, it's because of like, uh, there's a, there's an arrangement, but also I think because of how, like sort of skillfully you, you rendered stuff. Um, that's wonderful. It's really wonderful. It's beautiful. And then this, I, you know, I just like, we all know, but like, right there at the in the ditch you were able to really i think pull off a, a beautiful line no blowout <laughs> yeah <laughs> congratulations that's 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 really hard to, <laughs> congratulations to the person who sat for that too because the ditch is her yes <laughs> yeah she was she was having a rough time like it, it, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys come across the clients, but like, like the whole in, in unintentional flinching and stuff like that that sometimes clients do. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah. yeah, you just hit it that was, nerve, and the body twitches. Yep, yep, yep. It was definitely one of those sessions to where like I would tattoo for a little bit, and I would like lift off my little bit, and she would like just flinch and jerk and move a little bit, and it was <laughs> she could she couldn't help it. It was part of it. It, it was you know, it was it was fun, but. But thank you. Yeah. Of course. Um, hmm. Let's see. Well, so Creature just said uh, she just shared some stuff, but I can't seem to see it on my on my Instagram for some reason. Hmm. Wonder. Yeah, ah, Creature has been doing great. Yeah, I can see them. For some reason, I can't see them on my desktop, but I can see them. See them on my phone. Hmm. Latest version of the app. Come on. Ugh. For whatever reason. What a bummer. Let's see. Maybe I can. Maybe I can forward them to myself. Maybe. Hmm can't figure it out i can't figure it out um hold on 
you guys uh, talk amongst yourselves. Um, it's a technologically challenged Monday. That's for sure. It is. That's, that's, that is definitely for sure. All right. I think I got him. You heard the, you heard the ding. Let's see. So, um, let's see. Let me see if I can share these with the group. Yes. Always a workaround. Okay. I saw oh, these. Cool. They look so nice. These are from Creature. And um, so thank you, Creature, for, for sharing. We really mm -hmm. appreciate you putting your work up for us to, to check out. Um, let's see. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk about them. Let's give Preacher some feedback. Here we go. Cool. I'm a big fan of the distribution between the darks and like the positive and negative relationships. Mm -hmm. Like how dark the wings are, and then you have the shading in the body, but then like that's it. That's all you need. There's plenty of skin break to let it breathe and show you the contrast. I like that. Mm hmm. Hundred percent. I think it's really, really cool. And it's not easy to get that dark on hands. So that's a really good job. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, there also are. Um... Uh, they, they are a nice size, mm -hmm. hand, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's like I've, I've definitely seen them. You know, people, you know, sometimes people go a little smaller. You know, it's like if you if you went any larger than that, it, you know, it kind of fall off. You wouldn't be able to see it. Mm -hmm. um, actually, like I just I just saw like a it was like a snippet from the Gods of Ink convention. And I think Philip Lou might have gotten two little two sparrows on his hands too, so um, nice. It's classic, right? It's a you know it's the classic um, sailor tattoo. Um, never go out of style, uh -uh. you know. And uh, very uh, very cool people like to you know rock this tattoo. I have a sparrow in color on my right leg, and my right leg is my color leg, and my left leg is my black and gray leg. Well, I want to put a sparrow in the same spot on the black and gray leg, but I want a different sparrow, and I kind of like this one, so I might draw something up in this style. Nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading the, the comments here. Uh, Creature says, I was being rushed by the client. 30 minutes. Don't let them rush you. No. <laughs> yeah. You can't let them rush you. Um, yeah, you gotta, uh, well, you gotta, you would have to say, you know, like if you can't, can't take the second one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you take what it takes. Mm -hmm. um, I love the placement of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think they like went, the, it's the, the perfect the size for the hand. Yeah. Yeah, just the placement and the size of them. I love it. This it flows on the hand so damn well. He only gave you 30 minutes. You did great. You did mm. good for the time that you, you had. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. It definitely would have taken me more than 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um right. So I'm well, I'm curious. So, creatures in the chat, if you're if you're still with us, um, can you you want to tell us anything about it? Is there you know like what sort of needles did you end up using? Um, did you just use black? Did you end up using a gray wash? Uh, well, we'd love to have any any sort of information that you can give us about it. Um, are these a particular old school artist? Um, some, I, you know, so I, I definitely, you know, I've worked with, I've had colleagues in the past and I, you know, currently work with people who are very, you know, sort of enthusiastic, you know, black and or, uh, uh, old school, uh, you know, artists as their orientation, identify as old school artists. And, um, and so I'm sure they could tell you, you know, like, oh, this is, uh, 
this is a sailor jerry or this is a sailor jerry swallow swallow right <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of uh you know there's all kinds of lore out there right of all the because that's a part of it right there you know you're really sort of um building on you know what others had done uh so I'm sure some I'm sure somebody out there could all could for sure tell us if these are particular artists like uh um you know design or creature did you design these ones yourself sort of synthesizing all of the the various um uh you know examples that you know that are out there um but it's uh it's really nice and then again I think you know it, there's there is definitely this there's some edge that's happening, which I think is, uh, um, uh, which is sort of pertinent to what we were talking about. Um, and these are the, uh, I think these are the things that we want to, you know, continue to explore, continue to, to like to, to consider in our own work. And, you know, of course, when we're, um, uh, we're talking about like, you know, um, the work that we are, uh, that we want to continue to do um but yeah that was that was so nice and um mm. yeah uh well i have so i'll just show i have a drawing um is it the drawing for tonight yeah i'm gonna yeah I'll show that one. <laughs> uh let's see Dude, oh, I'm, I'm excited oh, okay cool. The Thank sparrows you. are set up to drop in color later. Yes. And she said awesome. she used raw product and a 12 and 18 liner. Nice. Hmm. Nice. A single pass. Adjusted a piece that the client brought. Very nice. Yeah. I think that's uh, very well done. Yeah. Very well done. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Yes. So, and okay. Right. So, as a part of the uh, Monday night uh, drawing group, um, we all had a we all had a, a particular um, project that we're working on. Let me see if it pops up. Think so. I'm like watching it on YouTube while I'm talking about it. Okay, good. There it is. Uh, so yeah, we had a particular project, like you know, have a cat for a for a leg piece. And this is what I came up with. Um, let me see. I will. I'll go through the. So we have cat references, and then I'm just messing around, like <laughs> trying to figure out what what to do. Um, but yeah, like put a put a cat on a thigh. Um, this was a, a thumbnail stage, right? So having having this, I think, chance to go through thumbnails and stuff is something that I think is it's really valuable, um, and it's something that I've I've been forcing myself to do. You know, mm -hmm. we do it in you know in this class that we all take on Mondays, but I think also um, it's uh, in real life, right? In real life, you do it, and it can be very, very uh, effective and important. Um, it can really help you uh, come up with a composition that you otherwise wouldn't, you know, uh, have done. It's something that you're uh, uh, you get you get sort of bogged down just uh, you know with the first thing you draw, and something's not quite you know as effective as it as you wish it would be, you know. Um, so giving yourself that opportunity to do some thumbnails before you get into the detailing part is the, um, I think it, it can be, can be really helpful, mm -hmm. really helpful practice. Mm -hmm. so, I love um, that your references are ferocious lions and tigers. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like beautiful, beautiful little, little kittens. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. Those look like little demons to me. Hmm. Totally. Little hellions, man. But like, yeah, like the 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 thumbnailing process, like it's it's helped out so much with like clientele. So like, oh, we talk about this, that, and the other thing, and then like, 
I'm able to like, you just spend like five, five to eight minutes on a, a thumbnail, which is, you know, a decent amount of time on it. And you can, you can put together like five different concepts for your, or your, for your client to look at on this one idea. And you're able to be like, Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. I don't like that. You know, and you can just, it, and instead of just like putting like so much time into one thing and be like, oh, I don't like it. And being like, Oh shit. Now I got to start all over. It, it, it gives you a lot more different platforms to kind of go build off of. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's immensely helpful when it comes to like the, the, the designing and building uh, phase uh, with clientele. Cause you're just able to, yeah. So I'm like, Hey, we could do this or this or this or this or this. And you haven't put a whole lot of time into it. So you don't have really a whole lot of attachment to the design. So they're like, no, I don't like it. Okay, cool. Whatever, you know, delete it, move on to the next thing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a super, super helpful thing. It's, it's interesting too, because, uh, you know, uh, well, there's a, there's a possibility that you come up with a design that, uh, <laughs> thanks creature. Um, he just says, love the cat. Appreciate you creature. Um, love your sparrows. So anyway, what I'm saying is that uh, um, there's a possibility that you come up with a design that could work in another application, right? You're making up all these designs, you're going through it quickly. That's the whole point. Not a lot of investment. But I think, you know, we've all kind of, we've all sort of learned, I think, too, from like, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, this whole tattoo gate mess <laughs> it's like <laughs> like sometimes people just aren't satisfied with a concept sketch with a thumbnail um and so there's a risk right there is this risk right um so i think you know having a, a open lines of communication with your with your client is so crucial you're able to sort of uh again sort of show them that you have this you're having a you're having you know a vision you're trying to help them realize their vision be a visionary artist, but it has to start somewhere, right? You're not just going to be able to, you know, just produce the perfect thing. The, the thing that, mm-hmm. like, I love it when people say that, like, that's exactly what I had in mind, right? Because there's no way, it doesn't, <laughs> there's yeah. no way. I just, I just drew this. It wasn't, this wasn't what you had in mind. Um, but it becomes the thing that they have in mind because it's mm-hmm. like, you know, we don't really know what we want. <laughs> We don't really know, you know, but when you see it, you, you recognize that that's the thing that I desire. And so, um, so again, like thumbnail sketches are really helpful, but communicate, it's, it's a way to communicate, but that communication can only go so far, right? There, you know, you have to have to keep the lines open. You have to keep on working through it. And, um, uh, and you know, there might be a certain, you know, the, Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's the best thing, you know. If, if they're not feeling it, then maybe that's best, right? But I think too, it's you know, even if it's even if you're doing these very these very traditional American like motif in your design, then by all means, do some thumbnails of those too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's, I think that there's mm-hmm. there's a really could be something really brilliant that could come out of that, especially if that's the mode that you like to work in. Um, and so whether it's a very, very, yes, whether it's a, it's a very, very sort of complicated thing um, and or uh, a very simplified thing, you might as well go through a process where you're designing and, uh, you know, come making it your best. So mm-hmm. um, anyway, we're right at the 90 minute mark. We should wrap it up. I would love it if you co- y'all could give me uh, your sign offs. Um, Amber, could we start with you? Sure. As always, thank you for hosting these every week. I get so much out of them. Refreshing the basics and going over them again and again is really important. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I'm where Amber find Morgan, you? And you can find me at Luxury Tattoos in Egg Harbor City, New Jersey, and on all social media platforms under Amber Morgan. That's terrific. Uh, well, thank you again for showing us your, your newest tattoo work. Uh, it's looking great. And um, thank you. Yeah, no, I really, I mean it. I mean, I really do. It's like, um, that's, that's really what's great about this whole space. Like, you know, we're, we're all showing off our work and, you know, we're giving each other positive feedback, creative or, you know, constructive criticism, of course, there's mm-hmm. that's always located in within the feedback that we're giving, but 
I think too, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep working on it. Everybody does. Yeah. So that's the constructive yeah. criticism is important to be able to move yourself forward and get better than you were the day before. Mm -hmm. Totally. totally, mm -hmm. totally. So, um, but want to recognize the accomplishment that, you know, that all of the, all the effort and stuff that you're putting into it too, um, mm -hmm. starting to pay off big time. So uh, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome work. Uh, Kyle, can we get your sign offs, please? Uh, my name is uh, Kyle Olson. Um, I tattoo out of Trinity Art Collective in Tucson, Arizona. Um, you can get a hold of me uh, via the website at trinityartcollective.com or on Instagram at Olson underscore tattoos, O L S O N. And uh, that cat, it looks, your line looks so damn cool, dude. I love it. It's so mm -hmm. really, really good job on that. Thank you. Um, and, and, and thank you for hosting this. Um, like Amber said, just reiterating what she says. Like it's, it's so fun and it's nice to go over the fundamentals again and again and again and again, because it just like builds those connections in the brain to where it just, you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about it anymore, man. Like it's, it's so important and crucial to, to draw all the time, but it's also important and crucial to study the art, you know? So, um, thank you. Thank you. I get a lot out of it and it thank helps you. me out tremendously. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think, um, right. I, I agree with, with that, you know, sentiment, like we're, we're studying the fundamentals so we don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you could, you could forget about it while you're working. So you can just mm -hmm. work, you can enter that state where it's just sort of, you know, it's happening for you, but it's because of you prepared yourself, you know, in, in this mm -hmm. way. Um, and I think, um, uh, so I think that that's, these are things that I agree with. Uh, and that's why I, you know, that's why I've, I'm just so many years where it just wasn't there for me. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm struggling or like, I'm not, you know, well, I'm not satisfied with it, but I, that's something I've come to, you know, embrace is the, the dissatisfaction. <laughs> with You're the, never satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things, you know, that you have to like, uh, you got to deal with it. But, um, but anyway, it, I appreciate you all for being here and appreciate the audience for tuning in and for checking this out. Um, you know, if you're still with us, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, I'm James Wisdom. You can find me on social media, Tattooing Wisdom, as well as my website, tattooingwisdom.com, or my art website, paintingwisdom.com. Um, this weekend, uh, June uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, I am scheduled to be at uh, the Indie tattoo expo i'm going to be doing a drawing for tattooers class so if you're going to be in indianapolis on the 10th come to the indianapolis expo drop by the drawing for tattooers live event um love to have you uh, but it's going to be an aw it's awesome convention here in indianapolis so really excited for that and um you know again we just want to thank uh guy etchison for mm -hmm. being our mm -hmm. the founder and the inspiration behind the reinventing the tattoo network um and uh so thank you again everybody for being here thanks to guy um happy drawing everybody and we'll uh we'll see you next stream <laughs>